Hi, and welcome to Biology 111, Ecology and the Environment. I'm Roz, I'm a biologist at Queen's, and I'll be your instructor for the next 12 weeks. I work in the Biosciences building on campus at Queen's, and when I'm not teaching, I study birds. Peacocks. These are some photos from my field work. In my research, I'm interested in the question of how these birds evolve their incredibly long tails. And I'm also interested in understanding why some males are more successful at breeding than others. But that's a story for another day. If you need to reach me, you can send me an email at rosalind.dakin at gmail.com. I'm always happy to chat over email, Skype, or Google chat. Now, since this is the first week, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about the course. First up, this is not a lecture course. It's up to you to learn the course material on your own. And that includes reading the textbook. There are one or two chapters assigned each week. Plus, each week there will be one or two additional readings assigned. So here's the Moodle website. This timeline has all the info you need for uh, due dates and what the assigned readings are, as well as links to the PDF copies of the readings. I chose these readings to give you a first-hand look at what's going on in the field of ecology and environmental science today. And the idea is to show you that this is a field in flux. There are a lot of new ideas there's a lot of disagreement, and there's even some controversy. But I think this controversy is a good thing. Because, after all, if we never questioned our old ideas, we'd probably still go around thinking that the Earth was flat. Okay, most weeks there will also be a quiz on the reading material, and that will take place on Moodle. And quizzes in general will be due on Sundays, except for quiz one, which is due next Thursday because I wanted to give you guys a few extra days so that you'd have time to get the textbook and get started. On each quiz you'll have only one chance, but the good news is you can take as long as you need to, and the quizzes are all open book. So you're free and encouraged to use your textbook, to use websites, to use any resources you like. The point is to get you reading, thinking, and researching the concepts in the course, not to test your memorization. And so for that same reason, there will be no exam in this course. It's not about memorization, but instead it's about getting you to think and apply your knowledge. So, no exam? Where are our grades going to come from? Well, I'm going to get you to go outside. You know, where all that ecosystem stuff actually is. And what do I mean? Well, every other week there will be a discussion activity. And for some of these, you're going to have to go out into the environment and make some observations and collect some data. So again, all of the details for these discussion activities and the projects are all available on the Moodle website. But I don't live in a real environment. I live in a city. Well, that's okay, because ecology is happening there too. Even in Hamilton, where I'm from. Cities like Toronto, Hamilton, Vancouver, and Halifax all have their own unique wildlife. Like pigeons, or the peregrine falcons that hunt them. Or European starlings, which you can find in huge flocks on Queen's campus in the fall, if you look behind Theological Hall. The point is that ecology is simply what happens when a bunch of living things come together in the same place. They interact with each other. And these interactions happen regardless of whether that place is in the rainforest, the Arctic, or the suburbs. And if you're not in Kingston, that's even better. Not that I have anything against Queens, but one of the most awesome things about this course is that we have people taking the class from all across the country. And my goal is to take advantage of that as much as we can. Speaking of being from elsewhere, those starlings on campus, they're not really from here. They were actually introduced from Europe. There was this guy um, in 1890 who was really into Shakespeare, and he wanted to have all of the birds in Shakespeare's plays in North America. So he took about 60 starlings from Europe and he released them in Central Park in New York City. Today, about 120 years later, their populations have just exploded. There are literally hundreds of millions of them in North America. And some people think that their populations may have grown at the expense of other bird species, like pine martens and tree swallows. So starlings eat some of the same insects that pine martens and tree swallows do, and they also use similar nest sites. So if the starling population increases, it might decrease the amount of food and nest sites available for purple martens and tree swallows potentially causing their populations to decline. Which brings up the question, when is one species more valuable than another? But I'm getting off topic. What I really wanted to tell you about was the discussions, and how with these discussion activities, I want to take advantage of the fact that we can share data, share opinions on these big picture questions with people across the country.
Okay, if you've looked at the textbook readings for this week, you know that a major theme of this course is sustainability. It's really the topic of the first chapter of the textbook. And the book defines sustainability as the ability of human, cultural, and economic systems to survive indefinitely. And that means forever. To me, it's also about our ability to coexist in a way that allows those ecological interactions to go on in the long term. So in order to know whether something is going to be sustainable long term, we have to make some predictions. And we need scientific data in order to do that. But it's not just about data from biology and ecology. So the point is, environmental science isn't just about ecology. It's truly an interdisciplinary field. Okay, last of all, I want to leave you with my philosophy. Some of the things we'll cover in this course can seem pretty bleak. So for instance, global warming is inevitable. Even if we stopped producing all greenhouse gases today, our best prediction is that the temperature of the Earth would continue to rise by about a half a degree in the next century, just because of the carbon dioxide that's already in the atmosphere. So it's inevitable. Big changes are coming. But I think humans are capable of amazing things. Like this bridge in Japan. This is a four kilometer long suspension bridge. And it was a huge project. It took two million people 10 years to build this bridge. I think it's amazing that people working together can accomplish projects like this that are so big, it would be difficult for one person to imagine all of the individual steps involved. And that is why, as much as possible, I've tried to design this course around working together as a collective. My goal is for us to share knowledge and share ideas. So for this week, go check out the course website on Moodle, read about how the quizzes and assignments work, read chapter one in the textbook, and read these other two assigned readings that are available in PDF format on Moodle. And when you're ready, take quiz number one, which is due on May 16th. And so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to send me an email. And that's all for now.